Hey guys, Shinlox here, back with our blind playthrough of Kane. With me today is Jack. He's right here. All right, let's continue. Bless you. The chef. I don't know how you pronounce that. Over. Like hors hors d'oeuvres. Of this perverse tableau, a limp body slouches between the cables and circuitry of its life support apparatus. So he is alive. <clears throat> Would you be less crazy now? What do you see? is dead. Well, hallelujah, then. He's here. Alive? In stasis. <clears throat> yes, yes. I know you're in there, trust me. I know. You don't have to remind me. I can feel you, all right? Why are you crazy? Stop being crazy, Mr. Jack. All right. Kneeling children. Even the innocent must grovel in this obscene beatitude. We got an, oh, uh, what was it? Prostate human effigies, rapturous faces gazing into the light, praying for grace and absolution that will never come. Yeah, cryo control panel, terminal controls and regulates the stasis pod. Oh, so we're just gonna take the control module? I guess so. Oh, relax. Take months for you to thaw out. Is it frozen though? Hendry Kane. S sallow skin bulges around a thousand gossamer scars. The surgical seams of this patchwork messiah. So is that not actually him? Okay. <clears throat> You're crazy, mister. Um Is this where we were? Um Oh, well okay, it explains why I was so Close now, hang on. Viscous nutrient soup. Unidentifiable clumps of gore and other organic matter heave and churn languidly in the vat. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty gross. All the stuff, the whole artificial womb being open. You're a crazy man, Jack. Okay, so... So hang on, let's let's save right here. Okay, so right. Yeah, okay, you gotta go. I don't understand this. So I mean you basically go to the the printer room. Okay. Then it says after you do that. I'm a little confused. Because it says you'll get killed, and I'm like, okay, but that's what we want to do? It's an achievement thing as well, but I don't think, since I'm playing the GOG version, we don't... I don't know if there are achievements. Or at least, even if there are, I don't know if they work for me. Because for whatever reason, Gog Galaxy is, uh... Friends. Hi, friend. I'm Ralph. Hi, friend. I'm Ralph. Hi, 
my friend, I'm Ralph. Let's pray in the PDT together. The other thing is, on the, the walkthrough, this was all thawed out. You couldn't see the ice and stuff, so... Broken PDT. The PDT is streaked with blood and smashed beyond repair, but the data storage might still work. So whose was this? Joseph PDT accepted. Awesome. Glad I don't have to touch that again. Okay, so was that a Joseph's? Thank Blank PDT accepted. That fits nicely. And then cryo unit, heavy duty cryo unit for the regulation of cryostasis. Strange that that would fit here, but okay. Cryo regulator accepted. Oh, weird. Defrosted. And what is this in the background? Oh, that's its face. Oh, so it's a head. It's not just a brain. It's an actual face. Okay. PDT to Kern. Your PDT has been printed. Oopsie. An incorrect cryo-regulator has been used. An overload is imminent. Goodbye. Please kill me, thanks. Oh yeah, so we used the wrong... Man, she's taken... Like, multiple explosions now, and any of them would have killed her. Again, glad my cats can't hear this. Okay. The security system is reset! The elevator should be open, and I have a PDT! Excellent! Yes! I can hear the alert. You must be close. But how close... Which is probably not us, it's probably Samantha. I kinda wish... I mean... It would've been better- oh yeah, see? Okay. Okay, so this is where we save. Because it says... It says if you go up here, you'll get killed. Do I just click on the elevator? Let's try it. No, I can't. What? What? What's wrong? The barrier is torn to pieces. Be vigilant, Hadley. I'm counting on you. You can do this. Be brave. You can do this. You're doing it. Yes, yeah, so you're supposed to go here, I think. It's probably like you get up here. Oh, maybe you can't get in there without doing this because the elevator is not active or something. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. Wait, what the hell? Yeah, I mean, I think it was scarier when, I think it was scarier when we couldn't, we didn't know what Samantha was, we just knew it was, supposedly they had, it had a tail too, right? But it was just in a, in a thing, right? Ah, I see, yeah, okay, so, go to the brain lab.
Dearest little girl, my sweet creature, you're alive. Do you know me? Know you? Oh, my girl. I know you better than you know yourself right now. Oh, God. Adams will suffice. Hadley, you need to go. No. And how is the masterpiece inside of you? Healthy, I hope. Growing quickly now, I'm sure. It's nearly time. What do you mean? Our baby, Adley. Don't talk about my baby. Why did you take me? You were the right person in the right place at the right time. Can... Can you help me get out of here? Don't trust him. Out of here? Don't worry about getting out. Security will be here soon. They'll set this all right. Just come. Wait here. This is the safest room in the facility. Here. Closer to me. I don't think so. Do I have my pointer back yet? I do. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> escape for a moment. So, um, yeah, Adams, he's behind a force field or whatever. That makes sense. So it doesn't make sense how, first off, it... I mean, you, you couldn't transfer I don't think you could transfer Kane's thing onto the onto the baby because a child's brain is literally not as developed as the brain of of uh, an adult right it just wouldn't it wouldn't make sense it doesn't have the synapses and all that stuff and and honestly it's the physical part is the the mind I don't I don't believe that there's necessarily an independent soul or or mind outside of the flesh, you know. Because your brain grows its connective tissue and the synapses and the neurons and all that stuff and all that makes you like your synapses are different than the synapses of another person. So, yeah. Anyway, all right, so go back to go to the brain emulation lab. Next, get rid of Samantha. So this might be. Ooh. Wow, is this really? Okay, meeting the only survivor. Check his PDA. The lacerated flooring. To get a that thing. Um. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, let's read the PDA. PDA. Private journal, but knocked to the floor. <clears throat> I'm afraid that most of that information may be a little above your head. They tempted to stick around just to see this place burn. They did a great job with the voices, though. Like, all the voices are good, they sound good. The previous game, Stasis, some of the voices sounded a little tinny, like they weren't using the right recording stuff uh but anyway dr simon adams february 14th the day of love not that it means much to a senescent bachelor like me but oh an old man can dream can he not for old men have nothing but dreams to keep them awake in the sleepy languorous twilight of their years one might suppose and a dream of love is a salve on this chap's unrealized passion his grief his regret my work in the facility is a different matter entirely however Kane has already been delivered to us in stasis, and I still haven't succeeded with even a single subject. Most exasperating problem indeed, not least as this would be the only the start of my own ambitions, my own renaissance. Dr. Milan's research has demonstrated that consciousness is nothing more than a program, a set of equations and instructions and conditional arguments. It can be replicated and can be transplanted, but much like the body's immune response may reject a transplanted limb, so the body's most basic neural encoding its inherent sense of self, or what Freud calls the id, may also reject a transplanted consciousness. The question is how to suppress that encoding, how to suppress perhaps the human soul itself. Uh, and instead of looking for an answer, instead of solving the predicament of human mortality, I'm dreaming of Joseph Bueno eating me. It's rather arousing. Okay. They're all kinky weirdos um 
so... Yeah, Dr. Milan. Um, presumably he had a career before he went onto the Groom Lake, which would make sense. Uh, then again, they did get things from the Groom Lake, so yeah. Now here's an intriguing coincidence. I've discovered that a recent but otherwise bureaucratically insignificant employee in the facility is related to Kane. The genealogy is tenuous, but definitely established. Could a genetic component be the solution to our problem? Acquisition could be precarious, but a man finds luck where opportunity and preparation meet. This man could use a bit of luck. I have an opportunity, so now prepare. Hank is mostly my fault. I'm afraid of the calendar, I told him this morning. Why, he asked. Because its days are numbered, I replied. And then I had to explain the joke because Hank is not exactly the most socially sophisticated boy. He's not exactly the most ordinary boy. I should have disposed of him with his host, I know, but I'm maudlin and besides, I'd always wanted a child. I always wanted to be a dad. I named him after my own late father, a man I confess I despised for reasons too numerous and humiliating to disclose here, but my colleagues in the lab call him the hobo. I should probably be insulted on his behalf, but I'm not sure I blame them. He might be a kind of ersatz son, but he's undeniably peculiar. Much like me. Since adolescence, I've been fascinated, no consumed, by the prospect of incorporation, of two people merging, absorbing, and coalescing with one, each other and becoming one. It's obviously been a tremendous motivation for my ongoing research of the facility, but it's also profoundly personal. If I could transplant an adult's consciousness with an infant subject, it must be possible, with some recalibration no doubt, but fundamentally not a dissimilar process in theory, to transplant an adult's consciousness with another adult. It would certainly preclude the vulgar taboo, grisly mess, and dubiously esoteric prospects of old-fashioned cannibalism anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> and Joseph is the sort of man I'd always wished I could be. Elegant, charismatic, generously endowed. I mean, I assume he's generously endowed. You are super cute, Mr. Jack. Kern's project is absurd. The regrowth of organs is only a temporary solution to the permanent problem in, of inevitable infirmity, and a most impractical one. You know, this whole game actually reminds me a lot of Mechanicus, the Warhammer 40k. What are you doing right now, Mr. Crazy One? Um, especially the the Kern guy quoting scripture really reminded me of the um, Mechanicus game where they're quoting the scripture of their whatever. Anyway, sooner or later the body must itself be replaced, whatever his pious pretensions and shrieks of heresy. He can worship Cain all he wants, but science is, as they say, a non-profit organization. Ha 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 ha. Uh, Cain is a client, even if he does technically pay our salaries. Our work here is not some occult apostolic devotion. It is legitimate, if maybe not entirely ethical, I'll concede. Medical research for the future prosperity of humanity, or the future prosperity of our facility in Raph's case. Ralph's case. Ha. Huh. We're all about maximizing efficiency over here, and we didn't need a health and fitness officer when everybody who works in this lab is already a medical professional. You are a crazy man. In the meantime, progress on my own special order is exceeding expectations. Joseph has pursued, uh, proven rather more resourceful than I'd first imagined, although I'll claim the credit for his uh, extraordinary virility. I've started contriving arrangements for the host transfer to my lab within the next two months or so, with final delivery scheduled just in time for the ho-ho holidays. Oh, Dr. Adams, for me, you shouldn't have. We've had some series of accidents in the lab. Actually, I suspect sabotage of some sort. I found some discrepancies in our security access logs, but the joke's on whomever is responsible because the early termination of our last two host batches have provided a convenient subterfuge for the requisition of my own special order. Now I can watch it on the ultrasound monitor 24 hours a day. All other priorities rescinded. Reports of an emergency situation elsewhere in the facility, although the details are infuriatingly, if unexpectedly, ambiguous. As per official company protocol, I've started the arduous process of backing up my lab work, but if a full evacuation is called, I could lose the most crucial project I've made on the pro- er, most crucial progress I've made on the project, progress which has, in fact, come almost to full term. What is 
that thing out there? Samantha, a grotesque violation of genetics. But she is locked away. Joseph managed to lure her behind the loading fence. Quite the action hero, our Joseph. He did die rather spectacularly. The fence has been ripped open, and your experiment is going to tear us all to pieces. <laughs> no, no, no. All three of us will be safe very soon. Then we can carry on where we left off. I said don't talk about my baby. Well, yeah, he is safe behind the door. Wheezing obscenely with every breath, he watches Hadley with a smug, sanctimonious sneer. It's very silly because she's out there. Like, he should do whatever. Force field. The plasma ionizes the air and forms an impenetrable hexagonal barrier of energy. I mean, I'd say they have... Hadley, you can't leave me. I say they have other problems. Uh, where am I going? Roof facilities, was it? I have the fire extinguisher, so I'm gonna use that to put out that fire near the elevator, I think. Um, yeah, crew facilities. Right. Click on it to get upstairs. Go to the PDA. Okay. Uh, I had to pour myself another fake beer, I had a banana and some peanuts, and I'm still hungry, but that's okay. I was going to wait for another day to have the cake, but but maybe not. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Layers of ash on the floor resemble a thick carpet. That's gross. Okay. Fire suppression. Smoldering debris. Oh, inclined metal floor. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. And I totally knew it was going to do that. Again, something that exploded. Nothing. I think that's what scares me. The idea that when we die, there's just... Nothing. It's not nothing. Sounds like you have a life most are envious of. You have kids, right? A real family. Like people know you exist. Real life. Some of us never got off the starting line. You will have a family soon. When I die, I want to leave something behind. You have that. I have student debt and a goldfish. Your legacy is the child inside of you. This baby deserves more than what I could ever give. It deserves to be part of something. Something bigger than me. A family, a home, a future. Interesting. All right, let's click on the PDA. And honestly, I'm glad. So they make her walk by herself. Joseph Bueno. Um, but to be glad. You know, what the hell was I thinking? Yep. Um, oh, was he the one that was having. Sampling the goods in the lab, like the pregnant women? Like, that's pretty freaking gross. Um, anyway. Uh, no, how they make her walk towards the, the goal when you're, when there's dialogue, that way you can't just, like, go forward and miss it. That's cool. <clears throat> I don't even want to know what happened in the lab. Keep a bunch of pregnant bitches locked up in one place long enough, shit's gonna go down, everybody knows that. But with Kane arriving next month, and now this fucking disaster, security is getting tighter than my glutes on leg day. LOL. Got to use that line at the interdepartmental mixer later. Between this, my new skincare regime, and that and that baby, he let's make like a DNA hella case and unzip these jeans t-shirt. These sluts from the organ grinder are going to be slip and sliding off their seats. I hit the jackpot. Hit it, but didn't quit it, if you know what I mean. Smiley face. Winky face. 
Gonna keep this plate spinning because her name is Julia Kern. She's only, wait for it, Professor Kern's daughter and assistant. Solid 6.8 out of 10, maybe even 7.1 if she'd shut the fuck up. Nice deltoids. More importantly though, she's in charge of Samantha and her grubs. I played this right, I've got free tickets to the Organ Grinders Petting Zoo whenever I want. More like Heavy Petting Zoo? Major threesome potential? LOL, maybe. But seriously, this is just what you've been waiting for, Brosif. I might even get to cop a feel off Samantha. Just thinking about it is getting me so hot. The new batch of hosts is gonna feel that burn tomorrow. Okay, he wants to have sex with Samantha. Got some annoying new guy bothering us in the lab about the facility's new perpetual quantum power system, Danny something or other, total beta. He's even got a fucking pet bird. Had to sit through a whole presentation about shit, I don't know. I don't pay attention to chumps. I was too busy dreaming about the nasty things I'm going to do with Samantha. Julie gave me the grand tour around the organ grinder yesterday. I noticed a spare larva incubation canister in one of the storerooms. It's a bit busted up, but I think I could fix it. The real problem is uh, liberating some of those grubs, but just imagine I could grow my own very own sexy mermaid monster. Maybe I could even put in a requisition to Kane Tech for an extra orifice mod, lol. In the meantime though, I've been cooking up a new sedative mixed with a lab host that keeps them nice and compliant, but also just a bit awake. You know, low enough consciousness to keep the EEG normal, but high enough they know when I'm working on my special projects. Gotta keep myself busy, you know. There's something wrong with the food. I swear people are shitting out of their eyes. I told one of the interns Danny's been dosing the rations of radioactive goo because fuck that guy and his dumbass bird, and it's totally the kind of thing a beta loser would, like him would do for attention anyway. What the fuck is up with this cheese diet? Sure enough, everybody was blaming that asshole in about two hours, lol. Managed to grab that larva incubator and two grubs while everyone else in the lab was cramming the toilets, though. Hello, grubbet and grublina. He called whatever her name, Grublina. Gross. So he's already like screwing him. Adams paid me to hook up with some chick off site last night. He gave me a bunch of performance enhancement pills, like the sexual Tyrannosaurus needs it, lol. And I had to get video proof and everything. He was very insistent about that. I didn't know he was into that kinky voyeur shit. Actually, I kind of thought he was into me. That old creeper eyeballs me, like, constantly. Does that make me some kind of, like, hot wife, but a dude version? Is that gay? Whatever, it's cash in the bank and Julia won't ever find out. Like, we never already have enough shit stains around the facility, Kane has sent us a fucking health and fitness officer to sort out the food problem, instead of sending us more food. What the hell are those corporates smoking in the boardroom? Because I could use some of that. Shit's been fucking crazy. First, the arm malfunctions in the lab. Don't know what the deal is there, but we've had eggheads coming in and out all hours trying to fix it, and we lost two shipments of hosts. On the one hand, it's pushed us behind schedule, but on the other, the bruises on those whores were starting to show. Now I've got a whole fresh canvas for my art. And hey, remember, like, that's, yeah, so he, yeah, anyway. Uh, hey, remember Ralph? Yeah, Ralph's out. Technically, it was kind of decided he'd be more useful as the PDT printer's new CPU, and nobody else was more fit or healthy for the position, lol. Now Raph's doing some real work for the company, and nobody has to worry about logging their macros and carbs or whatever. And I monitor my own anyway. Oh, and I somebody found a, a thing in atmospherics. Like some kind of puppet made of rotting body parts. Pretty sure it's the hobo's girlfriend or some shit, lol. I guess some guys gotta get it where they can, and let's be honest, who am I to judge? Yeah, and the hobo was like licking it. And yeah... Last but not least, I think Grublina might be pregnant. Yeah, she's definitely getting fatter. Not just because she fucking ate Grubette. For reals, that is a thing that legit happened. Not at her carcass for like a whole week. And her boobs are getting huge. A little punishment, they spew grub milk everywhere. But it's actually kind of hot. But gross, but also hot. Julie is beginning to irritate the shit out of me. Since when are a few bruises not a sign of love? A few, lol. Chivalry when they like it and sexism when they don't. Dude, I'm totally the new resident DJ in the crew lounge. My sexy tunes are making the bitches hot for a brosif meetup. Get it? 
I put my playlist on repeat on the vintage boombox. Pussy magnet. Some kind of emergency drill with the elevator. Don't know what it's about, but it's serious. Ugh, now somebody's fucking screaming in the corridor. Gotta go, brah. Alright. Let's go through the ripped open door. Even the frame and walls are buckled and broken, as if by some furious preternatural force. This room is much smaller than the other. Maybe he drew the short straw. <laughs> this isn't the only small thing he has. So this is Joseph's room? Painted portrait? Returning some holodisks by JB is scribbled in, scribbled in corner. So it's himself. Wait, but there's a door? Anyway. <coughs> Okay, Joseph Bueno's room, personal safe, you need a DNA sample, use a glossy photo. Okay. You need a DNA sample, so use the photo. Oh, I see. His secret room, go in there and meet Grublina. Heavy duty electronic safe with biometric scanner. Yeah, so there's, oh, it's a door. You can see the hinge or whatever right there. Okay. Um, ripped up bed sheets. The reckless disarray suggests somebody was looking for something. Destroyed personal terminal. Whatever might have been useful, it's wiped out now. Junk. Okay. Oh, glossy photo. A photograph signed Love Joseph. It also furnishes a lipstick kiss and suspect stain in the corner. So it's got uh, his personal fluids on it. DNA accepted. Yeah, exactly. Not the lipstick. Okay. Voice imprint. Voice playback. Voice imprint accepted. This place keeps getting stranger. Okay, so that wasn't a, a hinge. Anyway, doorway, let's go in. Let's see what the hell Grublina looks like. Oh! Oh, dear. Can you, um... Can you understand me? Do you... Do you need, um... Okay, fleshy creature. Its mouth sucks wetly at the stale air, bloated teats, heaving ponderously above a clammy, desultory accumulation of limb-like appendages that clatter and scrabble against the metal pen. Okay. What the hell? So, incubation canister? Empty specimen containment device? So it's... Stripped down so... Wow, that's pretty... Yeah, okay. Take the incubation canister. Use the whip on the fleshy creature. You'll get some milk. Combine it with the empty canister. Exit the room. Okay. Go to the power generation room. Okay. Okay, use the whip on the fleshy creature. No! Oh, come on. I don't have the stomach for this. Grublina milk. A pinkish fluid discharged from Grublina. Okay. Okay, um... Okay. Not much of a barrier, but it's managed to keep this dirty secret safe. Uh, 
I notice the music is changing. She's running now, at least. Okay, so we're going back to the power generator room for... I don't want to take the phrase bun in the oven too, literally. Um, yeah, because presumably we're going to use that field generator thing to slice Samantha in half. Not quite sure how, but okay. I do like how the hologram changes every time you run through it. Like it distorts. That's that's a neat little neat little thing. Okay, we're gonna save right here. Quick save. All right, let's take a look. What do we do next? Go to the power control room. Go to the damage terminal to retrieve the ID for the grub habitat. 668 for the service shaft. Go to the terminal, use the PDT. Oh. Okay. Mm okay. Okay, well, you know. Logged in as error, error, so... Okay. 668. Sticky pool of coagulated blood. What does it say, the average human something something? Um, which, I think we go this way, right? Okay, so we have the PDT. <sighs> okay, area ID 668, boop. And then we're gonna... Temp. I think 95 is what they said, right? And then, um... Okay... 95 and RH84. Okay. Wonder if it'll... Good. Okay. Okay, so where... I assume we're going to the grub habitat now. Right, okay. Exit the room. Back to the power thing. Back to the birthing lab. Canister. Okay. Man, I don't know if we're going to have enough time. The last thing I said to my son was to get out there and carve his own name into the world and stop relying on mine. Did you mean it? Sometimes kids know that their parents say things they don't mean. My mom, 
The last thing she said to me was that I was the reason she was alone. That I sapped the life out of her from the moment I came into existence. You know that's not true. A small part of me knows that. A bigger part doesn't. Yeah, that's familiar. <laughs> so if Kane is in the baby, is he he must be aware? Okay, so what are we doing with the grub? I, so here's the other thing. I do like that before she's she's actually had an arc, which is interesting, right? Um Hadley, I mean, she she went from you know, I want an abortion to now she's like, "Don't talk about my baby. I'm going to raise or I don't know if she said she's going to raise it or whatever, but she's like she's like this baby deserves better or something. You know what I mean? Like, she sort of had a character arc, which is nice. I didn't expect that. Uh, I think we go this way? Yeah, because that way is to the weird thing. Alright, why don't we use a containment thing on probably this? Oh, yeah. Baited incubation canister on the retrieving platform. Oh, and the baby's happy now. I smell terrible in there. Yeah, just thinking about it. Yeah, it smells like rotten meat. So the grub went from that to... It went from looking like that to almost looking human? Very strange. And, uh... The music is pretty good, too. Gotta admit. Maybe Samantha somewhere with Freddy. Maybe I could kill- Yes. <laughs> yeah. Kane's like, yeah, we gotta kill Samantha. We're running out of time, too. Okay. Uh, go back to the power, put the grub on Danny's body. Makes sense. Um, go. Is that it? Put the grub on Danny's body and go to the elevator. Okay. So is it automatic then? The next conversations I have with my children, it will be different. Second chances at life don't come around often. Second chances? Your dad would be proud of you, Hadley. If he knew me, knew who I'd become. A survivor. It's not my fault that I look like him, or act like him. And it's certainly not this baby's fault that I'm here. That's on me. I can't blame my child for where I am. I know that my baby is... Family. Family. 
Man, I, is so is Kane? He knows, but he's not telling her. Cause he, she's like second chances, and he's like, oh, uh, 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 I, I'm not saying anything. Right. So how does that work for him, knowing that? I mean, cause he's being manipulative, but he's doing it. I mean, I. Oh, it just straight up tells you. Let's save. And I wonder if the music is at this peak on purpose. Bloated, livid tongue protrudes obscenely from his mouth. He's very dead. Yeah. Okay, what now? Okay, Freddy. Time to call Big Mama. Do I have... <laughs> Okay, she's going to the switch. Oh, what the hell was that? Okay, cool. But yeah, Samantha looks kind of dumb. If I'm being honest. Come on. It's time to go. I can get help. I can find you now. No time. The elevator. It's close. It's open. I did it. We did it. This baby is going to be a fighter like his mom. I can feel it. I know. All right, I guess we go to the elevator then and we... How... So she's wearing some like weird metal thing around her. I mean, it's covering her boobs too, but it's also, it almost looks like it has I mean, they don't, I guess they're not explaining how, where the voice is coming from. Oh yeah, and they're, they blocked it off. Okay, so to the elevator, I guess. Large freight elevator waits on the platform. So it's also interesting that it's not a direct continuation because the third game is, uh, John. Back to John. But this game does not explain... It's it's not a bridge between the two games. I mean, I kind of like this, honestly. I'm glad I used the walkthrough, to be honest, because otherwise I'd... She's given birth, or is it, or is he just like bursting out? The baby is coming. I'm sorry, Hartley. Oh God, it hurts. Something is wrong. There's something wrong. Nothing is wrong. This is the way it was meant to be. Hello, Hadley. <laughs> Just on an asteroid or something? Like what? Oh wow, so all those lights are research things, and that's the Groom Lake, I think. So is this Neptune? Like it crashed, and then they built research things around it? Maybe it didn't need to, I don't know. It seems like it's intact. I would imagine a a planetary crash of any kind of spaceship would just obliterate it, right? So, 
So yeah, he's Kane's basically evil. Wow. Cuz he knew Yeah, Kane. Yes, with the baby right there like, "Hey, it's Kane," right? Like, yeah, okay. It even kind of looks like an old man. Right? Um Anyway, yeah, that's dark. Yeah, and he, it's weird because he was being like encouraging and stuff. But in the end, he was just using her. But how? So it, because it sounded like he's not being born naturally, like he's like he is a baby but his growth is accelerated or something like that and so he's probably like ripping his way out and then what he's like an alien where he's gonna molt and stuff and become like a full human soon or something I don't know dude did he use um no they didn't use it wouldn't make sense. Like, if he was an actual baby, he would just die. But he didn't want to be with uh, Adams. So, I don't know. I like the game. There's definitely some plot holes, I I think. But, um... It was decent. It was This, this one, I would say, is way better than Stasis, in my opinion. Because it's, it's more... Um, although, to be fair though, me using the walkthrough may have helped because it kept the pace moving, and it, um, I didn't lose interest in the story and the, the tone, um, like, I, I wasn't, since I wasn't focused on the, the puzzles and aspect, I was able to, the emotion stayed with me, so, maybe that was it, um, Maybe just this one was actually sort of had, um, I mean, it felt like the story was better and like in, in stasis, they hinted at John's past and we, you know, like you didn't take accountability for a family. He's like, oh, I know. And I'm like, wait, what are we talking about here? I don't know. I don't know. Overall, I'd say this one was way better. Could be me, could be them. Combination of the two, most likely. So, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. Really do appreciate it. Really hope you guys are enjoying these episodes. Credits, credit, credit, credits, questions, comments, concerns. Um, I was, I, I was looking at the credits. That's why my brain merged them together. Questions, comments, concerns, good, better, and different. Let me hear them. I do read all of them. I do try and respond to all of them as well. What is your guys' unique puzzle moment for today? For me, I'm going to say the game. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Like I said, possibly looking at the walkthrough helped. But it is, I mean, you know, it, it is improved, right? The music, the voice acting, the color, palette, whatever you want to call it, the lighting. Um, they have more. It does look like their um, skills with animation and stuff improved. Uh, story, voice acting better. Quality of the voice acting, like the voice sound, was better. Just lots of lots of improvements. Um, I'm curious about Bone Totem. Maybe I'll maybe I'll play that next. We'll have to see. I don't know if it'll work on this computer. I think it should, but I don't know. So I may have to uh, try it and find out. But um, yeah, that's my unique puzzle moment. This game. Hopefully you guys just as good, if not better. Hopefully better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Till then, guys, take care.